Thank you. And it had never been very high. 11 years on the drugs, it was never much higher than 200, 250. But now it was 97, and the viral load was up to 135,000. That had been undetectable for 11 years. So all of a sudden, things were out of whack. Um, and she said, OK, we'll see you when you come in. I go in um, a week later, and he's angry. And he walks in the room, and he sits down in the chair, and he crosses his arms, and he glares at me. And I said, um, <laughs> I said, this is what I've chosen to do. And I said, and I had brought some folders and things with me. And I said, did you know any of this information existed? I said, were you aware of any of the controversy around this? And he kicked back in that chair and he looked at me and he said, nope. And I said, well, would you like to see any of this? Do you, would, do you want me to tell you why I've chosen to do this? And he said, nope. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he said, you have done a very stupid thing and you'll be dead very soon. So since then, um, I said, that's funny, because I'm feeling pretty good right now. That was my response to him. <sighs> anyway, I, I since go back and see him on my year anniversary of quitting the drugs. I went back in April of 2008, and I took him a goodie bag. And, and, and then I went back this past April. He, they, he wasn't around, but his nurse was not really happy to see me anymore. I thought they were going to be really happy to see me each year. They're not. Um, <laughs> what are you going to do? So anyway, um, <laughs> I've now uh, been off the drugs for two and a half years. I, I feel like I've completely regained my health. Um, the next couple of pictures are all from this past year. Um, you know what, uh, what I want to know is who's in denial? Because I'm highly offended by that word. Especially when you see what I went through and what I look like and how I feel now. Um, so to be called a denialist is so dangerous. It, yeah, that's another word they call me, dangerous. My husband and I, are, our ways of activism are um, doing rethinking AIDS booths at some of our local fairs and festivals, Earth Day Festival and things. <laughs> And we put our banner up, and we hand out pamphlets, and we educate, and we get a lot of people come through the tent. And we did this a couple weeks ago, was our last one. We had 100 people or so through the tent. Everybody was fantastic, except for a, one gal, young gal. She comes in, and she said, uh, oh, I'm an HIV tester. And I said, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> and she looked at me, and then she started looking around. I think she thought we were like a mainstream eight. And so we got into it a little bit, and there's a crowd that's forming, and they're all listening. And, and she's getting angrier and angrier, and she's asking questions. And I'm saying, do you tell, you know, when you, when you give these people these tests, do you, do you tell them all these 70 conditions that will cause a positive test? Do you say this? Do you say that? And she didn't have any answers for anything. But what she finally said to me before she walked out of the tent in exasperation is, you know what? She said, this hibernates for 40 to 50 years, and it's eventually going to get you. <laughs> so I will be so proud to die of AIDS at 93. You know, um, and then she said, you're dangerous, and she walked out. There's a whole lot of people more dangerous than I am, but they're not pleased that I'm speaking out about this. Uh, and, and, and not only am I not in denial, um, but my husband and I were robbed of a normal, healthy life and a normal, healthy marriage. We did not have sex, but maybe a handful of times in 11 years. And my children were robbed of a young and healthy mother. So I will not be quiet. I will not go quietly.